Hey, Hound Dogs, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. And welcome to On the Air with Power Squared, a weekly look behind the scenes, what we hope will be everyone's favorite comic book, Power Squared. Uh, today we have a guest. Yes. You want to introduce us? Uh, this is Rory Still. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is a... Uh, would you actually like to tell us about yourself? Um, sure. I am a... Um Afrofuturist uh, content creator, um, and what that that is included so far is that graphic novel, um, and the short story book upon which it's based, where some weird and wild and wonderful things happen in an alternate Philadelphia and an alternate universe that's starting to expand. Um, all done by a benevolent trickster goddess uh, named Flashbang. All right. And it's Music and other things, to put it mildly. You know, toys, clothes. Wow. All right. Scented candles. Well, we did have scented candles. <laughs> <laughs> we sold out, so that was that was good. Uh, tough and tender, tough and tender, Teddy Ninja. <laughs> All right. So uh, you two know each other. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we took a class together with Brooks Wachtel mm-hmm. at UCLA through the extension program. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. It was writing animation. Right. That's good. Yeah. I wrote... Very excited for this. I'm yeah. So <laughs> I wrote a Tutton Science script and she wrote an X-Men script. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so we've been having a series of uh, these shows where we've talked to, uh, you know, our artists, we talked to our colorists, we talked to our letterer, and we thought it would be nice to sort of talk to somebody that's actually read some of the books besides us <laughs> mm-hmm. to talk about them a little bit. Um, okay. And since you've actually read them, we thought we'd have you on and, uh, you know, talk a little bit about Power Squared, your reaction to it, if you have any questions about it, mm-hmm. um, that kind of stuff. So. Okay. you have any questions? I mean, what did you think um- of I'm I, honestly, I'm. Uh, it's funny. I realize my brain uh, does something where it like leaps ahead. Um, yeah. It's definitely interesting. I feel it definitely is giving both. Well, I haven't met. I was about to call him by his, his, his <laughs> character, Eli. I'm just going to call him Eli. I know he has a real name in this reality, Trevor. But um, um, I'm curious where it's going to go. I definitely, you know, get the sense of you guys being the protagonist. Um, I definitely, you know, did that with my own, except for I kind of made myself sort of like for the comic book, a background character, an invisible person, um, or literally a back cover person. Um, <laughs> I'm really curious where it's going to go. I was happy. Wait, I, am I allowed to mention spoilers? Cause I was thinking about something very particular. Um, you've read up through issue nine, right? Um, I or, do. I was thinking about something. Well, I was thinking particularly. I'm still reading through just a little bit. That's fine. Don't worry about it. But I mean, so you, um, you can say whatever you want. To, ask whatever you want to ask. It's fine. Okay, cool. No, I was just I was happy when um, even though I know it upset Eli, like I was happy when he killed the person who. This is gonna sound very harsh, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> like kidnapped his uncle because the man had to limp from his cell. Like, oh, yeah. doing out here snatching blood. Um, <laughs> I love how you marry the magical with the science, because um, I definitely saw that in like Shira, and I like how you ended up doing that. So like you got your you know powers from a magical creature. I won't mention which one it is, but <laughs> how that changed you guys physiologically, I felt that was like a really nice touch. Okay. Mm. Right. Um, you did you have any? Uh, questions about anything to do with it or um yes actually i'm curious if you guys like i'm curious what issue you want to take this to and have you considered making this also an animated series yes we have actually (laughs) Uh, we took a class at ucla together on how to pitch yeah um, a Mm -hmm. tv series and we've worked a little bit on a pitch deck uh and we've written a couple of scripts for it Mm -hmm. Uh, but we haven't done anything beyond that um, mm-hmm. because, you know, we don't have any connections with the animation industry. 
yet. Yet. <laughs> right now we don't. Okay. Because um, okay. everybody cool. always tells you when you go to the pitch, well, you know, you know people. And blah, blah. No, okay, I don't know anybody. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure how far we're going to take it. Um, mm-hmm. Right now we're working on issue 16 with the artist. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have mm-hmm. another, these three, well, that's like a two or three issue arc. Yeah. And then we have at least another mm-hmm. three issue arc and at least another mm-hmm. one that you're working on. And we have some other ideas. So we'll take it as long as we, far as we can, I guess. We don't okay. That sounds, sounds great. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, um, animation. I, in my head, it always leaves the toys. Um, so <laughs> definitely looking forward to when you guys end up making and collecting your, um, your, uh, the toys from this too so, yeah mm-hmm. um i actually ran into and i have to you know how you are working so hard on a project or a thing that like little things connected kind of kind of get in the back of your head yeah well i ended up running into one of my people um or one of the folk i'm connected with who had their own kickstarter that they just put up actually my mentee put up his kickstarter too um and he's he's working on a graphic novel but um one of the guys connected me to a guy in australia who does action figures and he did the i like the action figure that he did i have some information i want to share with you guys if he doesn't mind that's the short version of the story (laughs) (laughs) like um he just does them because it pleases him and the only thing you really pay for is like shipping from halfway across the world which is you know it wasn't exactly like free you know but um, but it's, um, I think it definitely would be worth it because, like, the way the characters are drawn definitely scream action figure, at least to me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, happy it screams at somebody. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I also have an idea, too. Um, I know you asked me for questions. These are not questions. These are statements. <laughs> but um, I actually, because I'm interested in, um, you know, putting mine, my animation up as well, too, even though I'd like, you know, you always have secondary plans um uh there's some people that my uh person like collected that we could pitch to and you know i'm just i'm gonna hit up my team about it but i'd like to possibly share that with you too you know so and that any like you know notes you could share on like the pitching class i'd be happy to hear them just put that out in that atmosphere um but yeah um let me think i definitely i'm gonna open one of the books probably going to open that Say, I learned you have it right beside you. <laughs> so, like, I, how did you choose your color scheme? No one can see this, I think. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, how did you choose your color scheme? And what what made you choose the particular shirt colors or, you know, the things that the, the you all, you know, or the guy, the, the, I don't want to say the boys, but the, the boys wore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thing. Well, I think some of it... Um... Mm-hmm. We were kind of recreating. I mean, when they were younger, I can talk as the father. Yeah. Uh, they kind of would go for. Uh, mm-hmm. Trevor was more would color himself more red, and Paul would color himself more blue. Mm-hmm. As far as the glasses, they literally would have blue glasses and red glasses when they were kids. That's so cool. we kind of carried mm-hmm. that over into uh, the mm-hmm. comic book. So it's. Okay. Um, and so that's how we decided on the, on kind of that color scheme. Yeah. So when okay. Paul uses when excuse me when Marty uses the power <laughs> it's blue and when Eli uses the power it's red. Oh, that's that's wonderful because like glasses when you can't see without them are superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the uh, um, then when uh, Mocha, who's their the mm-hmm. yokai that gave him the powers, uh, we mm-hmm. decided she should be purple and sort of red and blue together. Oh, right, because she gave him the powers. Right. Um, actually, I have two questions that came to mind. One, what made you choose Mocha's name? Because the uncle says, like, coffee. She said, yeah, coffee. <laughs> Is there a problem with my name? <laughs> what? And then, um, huh, what made you choose a kids? Oh, I gave it away. What made you That's choose? Fine. What made you uh, choose a Kitsune in particular to give them those magical powers? Um, I think the mocha mm-hmm. name came from wanting uh i guess something that was line of sight yeah she doesn't have a you know a human form name and so they ask her mm-hmm. so she's looking for something that she could use as a name and mm-hmm. we just thought well what would you see at a college i think originally we had had the meeting at the coffee shop mm-hmm. and, yeah. and so she would see on the board and she would you know 
I think Cappuccino is an actress already, so we just started going with Mocha. <laughs> I, I like that. As for the as for the <laughs> uh, uh Trevor and I are really into Japanese stuff Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. we're still learning about it of course but Mm -hmm. uh i think we just picked the kasune because we liked it (laughs) right and Mm -hmm. we were and it had some of the because we were we sort of came up with this idea while we were all three of us Mm -hmm. kind of walking around uh the block yeah and Mm -hmm. uh hey we could do the twins that was kind of unusual and they wanted to mix in Mm -hmm. sort of uh japanese mythology into it and uh, we wanted somebody that could take a human form and it just it, mm-hmm. it, have it be, and I think it's just Kasune kind of fit the bill. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, then I, I could I could see that. I think um, further exploring that, um, and, you know, particularly with like a beta reader who's, you know, of that culture, definitely would be like definitely the move. Um, I actually, it's funny, I'm going to end up using that later on down the road. Um, with, <laughs> Um, Teddy Ninja. I'm, I'm finding that that really is like that's you know I'm not going to say that suddenly came to be. Now that you know that's always been around culturally. It's interesting to see who is talking about it right now because um, that also well the nine tailed fox goes also in um, uh, Korean mythology too. And I don't hmm. it begins with a G and that actually showed up last week in Lovecraft Country. That's by you know Misha Green and Jordan mm-hmm. Peele. So it's yeah. Inter- how that's like like you know starting up here in different american places um or different it's interesting how it's starting to appear in different facets you know yeah um i wonder if like american guys kind of you know help with that a little bit but i like that she's a fox when i was little that was like my favorite animal (laughs) you know one of the reasons it, it still honestly is um with like you know pokemon and it's interesting how like if you I, I don't you knew people I'm not going to try to refrain from the curse word so um, <laughs> but if, if you make one angry you know yeah. um, the fact that it could curse you is problematic like, <laughs> like the thing you bought this week we've had this discussion you are all your shirts are not going to match forever like I don't care what <laughs> that'd be horrible <laughs> like <you're just> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like, listen, I'm not happy with how you walked me around the block until you do right by me. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's interesting. Uh, that definitely, I like how, and these are all the different comics. <laughs> look, look, people, look. Look at all you could have. That's right. Make sure you read before you catch up. <laughs> before you catch up. Um, but buy it anyway. Buy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely interesting um i'm trying to think of what else uh, there is a, another thing but uh the let me see is are we going to see i don't know if you could tell us this but are you gonna are we going to see any more mythological creatures make an appearance because i always figure if you have one there's going to be another I don't yeah. Know, but, yeah. mm-hmm. actually yeah, it's yeah. funny you should ask because <laughs> that's part of the uh we did a uh issue 15 yeah called how they met which kind of goes back to the little to their origin story and sort of you see how why Mm -hmm. she ended up giving them the powers because she was being chased by Mm -hmm. other yokai and then uh we have the one we're working on now is uh mocha and raven is the name of the title is the title Mm -hmm. of the the story (laughs) arc and uh Mm -hmm. uh, raven is a is a yada garasu there you go what's Uh, a yada yada garasu a Yadagarasu is a bird with, or looks like a crow yeah. with uh, three legs. Oh, I was just talking about that early in the fall. Continue. This is interesting. <laughs> so we're, we're, and then we were, yeah, we we're trying to introduce uh, more yokai into the, and then your your story idea is. Yeah, I'm actually uh, working mm-hmm. on a, a, I'm trying to make it a one shot uh, right now where, mm-hmm. uh, Marty and Eli face off against uh, Kama Itachi, mm-hmm. which are uh, weasels that ride the wind. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> I like this. I like this. I think I, I, I'm low key wondering if this is a product of, you know, coming up under the original Pokemon that used to be Andre. 
<laughs> but I'm, I'm totally here for like a battle against a uh, you know a creature that has any type of power. Um, and then I know that the three leg crow is supposed to be good luck, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Well, Ooh. not in our story. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Yeah, so there's, so Mocha and this uh, Raven, is what we're calling her, have sort of a history that comes out mm-hmm. in this, in this mm-hmm. and it's not a good history, but. This will be exciting. The cosplays yeah. for this will be um, a lot of fun, especially <laughs> with the, the, the yokai. And say the name of the three-leg Raven again. Yadagarasu. Yadagarasu. Yeah, no, this, once, once we are safely able to gather again for these cons this will very excited because you know like is 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 this you know continues to grow or you may have seen it already like you know the cosplayers for this are going to be really really cool (laughs) especially like if someone and because i saw i'm trying to remember like the biggest i've seen people do um transformer costumes where they're like built and everything so it'll be fun to see if someone does like a giant raven where they actually do the well i don't i'm really interested in seeing how you guys end up uh, doing this in your um, story. Uh, by the way, is your uh, book online as well? Probably should. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's on Comixology. Uh, okay. We have two print-on-demand services, and we also mm-hmm. have it on uh, Kindle. Okay, excellent, excellent. I definitely need to pick your brain about the, the Kindle one, because I was like... Uh, I wanted to do that for uh, my short story and also for the, the graphic, but I'm like playing with that idea. Um, let me see. Are we going to? Uh, um, I feel bad. I, I'm trying to remember your name. I remember <laughs> he's the dead, and that is not. Oh, is David. Not, David. There we go. <laughs> um, very, I'm, ba- very, I'm bad with names too. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Very tempted to call you Mr. David because you were somebody's parent and basically my classmate's parent. But um, you told me I could call you without the Mr. I'm, I'm gonna try. You know. Um, but yes, are you represented by Uncle Marty, or is Uncle Marty actually an Uncle Marty in the family? Uncle Brian. Uncle um, Brian. Is, uh, okay. Actually, Uncle Brian was uh, mm-hmm. based on somebody else. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they had a, uh, a a teacher that was, you know, mm-hmm. independent of schooling. I should say it wasn't a, a school teacher, mm-hmm. but he private teacher. Yeah, he taught. Mm-hmm. I was working with Trevor on art and Paul mm-hmm. on guitar, right. and mm-hmm. uh, we th- we used to think of him as sort of their fun uncle. And mm-hmm. so when we were coming up with a who they would live with, we figured oh they'd live with their uncle, and mm-hmm. so that's who uh, Uncle. Mm-hmm. Brian is is based on, and there's we also mm-hmm. threw in. I'm bad with names, of course. He was in uh, Spider Man and um, right. Uh, Burn notice, right? Uncle Ben. Uh, no, uh, no. Um, he was he played. Uh, he'd been in a lot of the movies from that director, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. Okay, uh, was also sort of used as a reference as well. Nice. Maybe he'll play him in the... That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call yeah. him right away. <laughs> yeah, you never know. I'm just saying manifestation, mustard seed of the faith. If you keep chanting his name, he might pop up. And, you know, he's probably happy to get out the house, too. <laughs> oh, thank God. Would you, let me read that comic book. Yeah. So, um, I actually ran across um, somebody who said, like, if that is kind of where you were pushing have a you know an ash can if i'm remembering that term correctly yeah yes did you guys do that for your um your series already uh well we're kind of i think kind of issue one is becoming kind of our yeah. ash can we're okay. kind of you know that's okay. sort of the introduction mm-hmm. we'll give that away with the idea mm-hmm. that you'll want to read more mm-hmm. yeah. but, okay but we're, we don't see we're mm-hmm. We're not the artists, obviously. So we mm-hmm. every everything we do, we pay for. So it's there's not yeah. a lot of just stuff to throw away. Um, yeah. no, I feel that I'm we had that. we had to um, have our first two issues recolored. So that was there, so they're actually yeah. made the most okay. expensive ones we've done. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, we got some really good feedback early on from somebody mm-hmm. at Comicsology that kind of helped us sort of uh, find mm-hmm. the right people going forward okay. so it was it was a good experience 
nice. Yeah. Um, what made you, uh, you know, decide to get it recolored? Uh, cause he said that was, <laughs> he, uh, uh, mm -hmm. he looked at it and said that, you know, the story's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. the art's all right. The, uh, mm -hmm. the, color, the lettering needs some improvement. It was the first time Trevor had ever lettered anything. And, mm -hmm. uh, he said, and you gotta redo the coloring. So, <laughs> and then we said, well, how do we, you know, we found, we had found the colorist and the artist on a mm -hmm. Facebook page. We had gone through the mm -hmm. comic creator connection thing at, at Comic-Con and uh, WonderCon mm -hmm. a couple of times and, and never really could find the right person to link in with. Mm -hmm. And so we tried this Facebook group and we mm -hmm. found the artist and we found the colorist and it would be like, how do we find another colorist without letting the current colorist know we're replacing them? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so he put us in contact with uh, some professors at SCAD, the Savannah nice. College of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found the first, I, I guess the second colorist through them. Yeah. And then we found the second and third colorist and then the artist and we found our our other color, our current colorist through as a friend of a friend of yours. Yeah. Okay. Julia. So I'm scared and a friend of a friend. Yeah. Sounds, sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds about right. And it's, yeah. it's been pretty, you know, um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really nice to get kind of that kind of feedback early on. Yeah. Know that we're kind of going in the, uh, the wrong direction <laughs> with the coloring. Mm -hmm. And we did, we weren't really happy with it either. Cause there was whole mm -hmm. there were whole sections that looked like, you know, they were on mm -hmm. the sun basically, or, you know, lava, flow in the background it was all orange and Lord. it wasn't really mm. quite what we were going for right mm. yeah and i think the current artist rachel the current artist we have is closer mm -hmm. to the kind of the image uh, that you had for it yeah. more of a western anime hybrid yeah so mm. okay that was going to actually be kind of my uh next question a little bit um as far as like how did you decide like with line thickness, because it's funny, like being coming from more of a writer base, you know, being able to do a little something here and there otherwise, but like coming from a writer base, these are like the visual stuff. I'm still like, I know for myself still learning. So that was, you know, how you decided maybe like line thickness for the background or even how you wanted the background to look is you kind of said Western animation. Yeah, um, we sort of let um, the artist uh, kind of, she has the script and we kind of, in the script, say, mm -hmm. you know, page and panel breakdowns yeah. and then let her to take a shot at how she wants to do it. Okay. And then she actually gives us a couple of very, we've been through this on a previous <laughs> show, various uh, two uh, versions. And we mm -hmm. say, okay, we like this page from this version and this page and this panel from mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. um we kind of let her, uh, and then she'll like throw out something from the script or a panel or merge things together or break things apart or change the order okay. a little bit. We kind of give her a certain amount of free reign. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we, we kind of go through everything, mm -hmm. every stage of the process, looking at okay. everything to make sure it's kind of going the way we want. But uh, we kind of, you want, you want to have the artist kind of have a, their own, you know, Mm -hmm. pretty loose reins around them i guess no i definitely i definitely feel that like um i'm i'm learning it's funny i'm learning two things one that that is when you find somebody good like you know who you're working with you kind of you know let them work their show um and at the same time i learned a a, a bit of a red flag with another project if someone's not giving you progress reports that's a whole problem you know yeah, yeah. So I, now i now now i know yeah <laughs> we kind of had that with the first artist we had honestly mm -hmm. uh, there were times where he would just sort of he was uh indonesia yeah and so you mm -hmm. know we had really no way of c contacting him uh oh. easily and he would sometimes go weeks without any sort of you know response oh. or whatever um mm. and so we've been you know rachel's really good about you know we we do eight pages a month mostly okay. out of budget um mm -hmm. and uh so she's really good about you know working on turning it every every month we get eight pages out of her unless there's okay. some, you know Excellent. we haven't had an extraordinary event yet that's stopped that yeah that's great that's yeah. really good um so that that was going to be my next question are you doing like one page a week or like but it's eight pages a month. Um, trying to, well, I do have another uh, question, but it's, uh, let me see. 
do you mind if I ask you some questions about pricing? Because I'd like, I'm, um, well, actually, I have one question before that question. Um, it's fun. So many questions. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I about to ask? I'll go with my money question because, like, the, the other question just decided to disappear in the back of my brain. Mm-hmm. It was, you thought you were going to ask me, but I'm a ghost. Um, <laughs> um, pricing wise, like, what were you guys looking for as far as, like, and then you guys are independents, you know, like me. So, like, what were you looking for as far as, like, your budget about what you wanted to pay per page? Um, well, it's... Yeah, sorry. It's uh, um, it's about uh, around $100 a page, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And that includes... It's a little mm-hmm. more than that. We're tr- and that's one reason we keep the comic books to twenty pages mm-hmm. is that it's you know it's mm-hmm. two pages we're saving money on. Um, mm-hmm. So instead of twenty four, it's twenty twenty. So we try to you know save a little bit that way. But it's it's roughly about two thousand plus an issue. Because mm-hmm. we pay a little extra for the cover and yeah you know, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Well, that, that that makes sense. Thank you for definitely sharing that. Um, you know, this like um, being somebody who produces, uh, you know, stuff as well as it's 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 good to know what's you know the market honestly is, and then for like you know other independents coming up. So, um, I know you said you were going to upload this to your uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, I definitely uh, I definitely will be watching this later. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, I love my hair. Oh, no, <laughs> we look amazing as a girl. Um, but yeah, no, I just also wanted to like save one copy too for sure. Yeah. And then also I tend to reshare this as well too. So. Great. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. That's a, that's a thing. Yep. Support. There yes. we go. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think you asked me some other questions. I'm trying to also think of some really, if, if you wanted to say other things, please let me know. I know this is <laughs> the, uh, podcast is like questions, like um like paul looking at that no this is what she has a lot no <laughs> yes. I'm kidding. I'm kidding i like that you asked me to ask questions i'm like yes <laughs> but um but yeah i i will actually could come up with other questions but is there other stuff you want to discuss too well we, we want to give you a chance to talk a little bit about yourself and okay. your flashbang and teddy ninja i guess is very important to mm-hmm. you and so you're working what you're doing animation with that yes yes so i um so what had what, what had happened was um i you know, decided to make this into an animation i guess it's i am both i don't want to say advancing or i should say move to the next step with the flashbang universe because one it makes me happy and two it's just i, I love it for what i grew up with um, that was like the progress of the different mediums. Like you had X-Men in the nineties, you know, and then you had the cool little toys. You had like, you know, all these different things to really experience the story on every single level. With um, Flashbang, I realized like since Teddy Ninja has been my, my cover person along in the creative process, I realized that um, I, you know, he's my flagship character, even though we're going to see everybody else. A one really smart thing a friend of mine suggested was like, Rory, you're thinking about these different episodes, different episode arcs. Um, use the stories. I was like, hey, that makes sense. So um, Teddy Ninja is about uh, a young uh, black man who's uh, vigilant, crime fighting, violent particularly. Like he's not just people who are doing stuff that isn't violent. He's not, he'd be more on the helpful side with stuff like that. But right. if it's, you know, you're mugging somebody, he's going to yeah. in a little knock in the head. And he <laughs> is in fighting crime with his sister when he is chosen by Flashbang to become her knight in training. And that involves getting turned into a teddy bear because <laughs> that itself is like a trial. Like you're used to being this well-muscled, well person who's able to like fight and everything, right? And now you're like this little adorable you know teddy bear they're used to being fierce and now you have mittens you know so it's a little hard to contend with that and he has to to get everything back in his life because he gets turned into his teddy bear and stuff just goes to crap 
like everything his enemy comes up you know his his something happens to his sister so he has to really kind of do what you know this goddess is saying or this huge outer force is saying to really get his life back you know but he doesn't want to do it and he's going to try to like bend bend his way around this but and we kind of see his his growth through the story so um I noticed that you um, you, wrote, you wrote it as a haiku. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was a very interesting mm-hmm. choice. What made you decide to do that? Was that just sort of in keeping with the ninja part, or was it something it, It's else? funny. Yes and no. Okay. So, yes, because yes. And um, <laughs> definitely we're, we're using, like, you know, with the ninjutsu or with him being a ninja, and that particularly coming from Japanese culture, I felt that that went well with it. The flip side of that is also, I, when I was little, I was, you know, reading above grade level, but like just somehow, I think I was in my little art sheet, um, or they didn't explain it well. No, no shade on my fourth grade teacher, but like syllables was like, okay, I'm reading well, let's move it along. But I wasn't like sure how to, so I ended up becoming, I ended up becoming a teacher later, and that that'll screw you up to write a haiku. You need to know what that is. So I ended up teaching them, you know, how to write a haiku because that. Being a poet as well, um, that you know, particular form intimidated me, but I was like, you know what? Boom, I'm gonna teach this. Once I taught them that, and some had like, some did just great haikus. And this is like, what's that? That was either my second or my fourth grade class. I was like, okay, listen, Rory, you taught it, you do it. So I ended up deciding to write his story through like a series of interlinking haikus um, for that reason as well too. I was like, you know what? This is how we're gonna do this. You know, and I've, I've that now has become a, a favorite form, actually. Um, so I'm using that a lot when I'm, I'm writing different things. And then I was a little worried because of the marketing aspect, right? They want one thing or another. But thankfully, somebody ended up getting an award for fusion fiction. So that kind of like, you know, everybody, everybody's victory is your victory, too. <laughs> one, thank God. Um, you know, I'm so happy you paved the way. Thank you very much. Um, but that is particularly why I decided to write that in haiku format. Um, the next thing I am, and I'm, gentlemen, I'm just going to lean out of frame slightly because I have to plug up my little computer because um, it's saying you have 10 bars of power. Um, but yeah, so that's why I wrote that. Um, some of the other stories, like with, I don't know if you got to see beginnings and endings. Um, that is written more so, I think, in, like, a rhyming, rhyming, I'm back, I am back. <laughs> He's on camera. He's on camera. Um, I wrote that more so in a rhyming couplet, and one thing I'm now pursuing, which you might end up seeing in, like, the second graphic novel whenever that comes out, um, might be, a uh, think, what did Lynn, Lynn Manuel Miranda write in, or do his, his thing, I'm trying to remember, It'll come sonnet. So I, I kind of learned the form for that, and I'm going to go back and keep keep playing with that. And then that actually might be the we actually might see within the animation that Teddy and some people end up speaking in some haikus. One thing I'm very interested in is actually making it a little Bob's Burgery and end up making this a musical. Um, so <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I'm going to uh, make this formulaic. And how the musical is like introduced, do we do it every third one? Or it just might be the theater rule where like if you are so overwhelmed that you can't speak, you start to sing. And if you're so overwhelmed with the singing, you just simply dance. So that might be kind of how we play along with this. Cause I really like what Bob does. He like suddenly will break out in the song. I'm like, I am every piece of theater <laughs> that I had to this. Sing, Mustache Man, sing. <laughs> <laughs> when he had that episode when he was stuck on the toilet, and like, I just I love how they do character too because Louise is Louise isn't evil. She is masterful. She's like my favorite favorite thing. And the messed up part is she's Bob's favorite child too. And I'm like, I'm glad my parent didn't have a favorite. She's like, you, um, she's like, you know, love you both. Yeah, you both can get on my nerves. So we were equally, <laughs> we were equally <laughs> in our heart. And I'm, I'm David, I'm assuming, and by the way, that's my father's name too. I just oh. realized that. But, um, and the brother, you know, um, and my late cousin. <laughs> yeah. 
Very, very popular. Very popular. Yeah. But I'm assuming you didn't have favorites, obviously. You no, I always said I had the middle one. The middle one was my favorite. You, in Flashbang, you also have different artists doing each story. Yes. Yes, yes. And so mm-hmm. what was that mm-hmm. like? I mean, was, did you choose them for the their art style for the story or was it more uh that, that's who you were working with at the time you were doing that particular story it's um I, again we have a, a yes and no answer um okay. i definitely chose them for their art styles um like the person who did the cover um i don't know if you can see me holding this up it's, you guys are a little blurry but i can see you yeah, um so this is eric battle um and eric you know has been like just an amazing person working with me. He does his own stuff. He's worked for either Marvel or DC as well. And like this cover he did, like one reason I really wanted to work with Eric is um, I knew one of this, you know, was totally blown away by who he was because he did the covers for the late LA Banks who did um, the Molly the Vampire Hunter series, which also takes place in Philadelphia and the Molly from Philadelphia. Um, And I knew how well he did wings, you know, so that kind of definitely you know, drew my eye and he's just, you know, he's just amazing, you know? So I definitely wanted him on that. Um, This is actually done by a young lady who is still in college and she has done all of this. She's just insanely good. So I definitely picked them for just how good they were. But since each story is different, I wanted to see if I can get a different artist on each so you could feel that spirit of how each story was different. And yet, you know, I noticed with the, 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 the color, that it's different in that there's a blending to it. So you're, you know, it's it's different organs working within the body, but a similar spirit, mm-hmm. a little bit. So that definitely what was I was I was going for. I wanted different people because of the different stories, and also these are, you know, for uh, like a lot of these people ended up working on the, you know, the short story book when we decided to end up putting pictures into it. So, mm-hmm. So one yeah. thing, one thing that uh, I thought was kind of interesting was uh, we had a, uh, a signing or a scheduled signing at uh, Golden Apple, uh, and it yeah. got it got canceled. Uh, it was the weekend uh, everybody shut down, and mm-hmm. you were scheduled for the weekend after that at the mm-hmm. same place, which yeah. I thought was kind of interesting how we kind of ended up mm-hmm. at the same place. How did you uh, arrange that? I guess would be my question. Um, I think they uh, agreed to sell the book and then I went back into it. It's funny. It's like, even though it was a year ago, it seems like three lifetimes ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I went into them and I think I just talked to them about that. And I was like, hey, can I do this here? They're like, yeah, yeah, uh, we're we're here for this. So yeah, they they talked to us. We went in um, uh, at the end of last year and they were actually selling some books to them right from your yeah. collection mm-hmm. and i took along issue number one and <laughs> said you know we do this mm-hmm. and so they were like yeah and i think they were talking about would you like us to sell it and we thought well we'll talk mm-hmm. to them when we go back for the signing and of course that never happened so we mm-hmm. haven't really uh, followed up with that yeah but uh mm-hmm. yeah it took a few uh a few uh phone calls and emails to actually arrange it all and then it just right there mm-hmm. and it got canceled on us it was kind of a sad mm-hmm. sad day we're all ready for yeah. it. But I assume that when things open back up, we'll be back in there at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, 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 think, I think they'll be very excited to see uh, us. <laughs> you know, because I just... Um, yeah, no, everybody got really hit, hit by that. And I was honestly trying to think, because I had, you know, my books in different stores. Like, should I call them now? Like, how, how are we handling this? You know, um, are they still open? So I realized, like, I've been, like, really dead set for right now on, like, the animation and developing it and focusing on the script. And, Paul, I've been sending you a few things, and thank yeah. you for your uh, help with that. I hope my notes on the Owl House were helpful. Yes. Okay. Great, great. Um, so, but, yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, that's a funny thing when, like, you're working on different different stuff. I've learned that, one, I it does not please my artistic spirit to just focus on one thing. Um, so, but, you know, one stuff done. So, um, what I do is I focus most of my energy on one major thing, and then I leave other bars of energy, like Super Mario or, or, um, Street Fighter. 
yeah. um, to for uh, some other things as well too. Um, but the funny part about it is I, I've learned a thing that just keep building out from like what you have. But the golden apple basically did come back to your question. That's basically how I arrange my, my little signing. And like I said, I think they'll be happy to see us because I know just like every entertainment based, you know, thing, they got hit really hard. So. Yeah. Yeah. It did. Have you done any conventions? Um, curious. Yes, yes. So wait, did we do a convention with this? Give me one second. I'm trying to I'm trying to hit the memory bar. Let's see if it works. <laughs> with um, I did conventions with Flashbang in the book, and the conventions of them. So we were on tour um, with the Flashbang Collective. That's a group of artists who like have helped in different ways, more so on the performing side of things, build out um, you know the Flashbang universe. So. We have gone to so ECBOC, which is the East Coast Black Age of Comic Books Convention. We have been to Nertino, which is, I don't know if it's the largest, but it's like um, a, a Latino, a Latino uh, community uh, comic book convention that takes place in Philly. I have to find out if it's the only one, too, because if so, then one that uh, need to, I'm basically going to advertise more. So <laughs> um, let me see. Um, we did that, that, that. We did J1Con, which focuses on anime, which is lit, hmm. um, and video games, too. Um, and that takes place in New Jersey now at this really dope hotel. Um, the food was good, that good, too, and I don't know if either of you gentlemen are into beer, but um, the beer I had like at the little hotel was pretty good, too. Somebody bought me a birthday beer. That was something. I appreciate it. Um, let me see. Where else have I been? It's been other places, too. Um, so what will happen is like, I'm selling at the thing. Right. Um, but also we end up doing a performance, which includes like the things from the soundtrack. Cause I did a soundtrack for right. the book or executive produced a soundtrack. Um, it's also, what else we do that? There's like a, so I hire cosplayers too. And I don't, the dope thing is you guys, uh, don't have to hire them for the twins. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know they're <laughs> for, for, for Marty and Eli. You, I think you know too. Who'd be very interested? To film <laughs> you know, but um, it could be very interesting to see like uh, somebody who does like your Kitsune or Mocha, like 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 a half between cosplay. <laughs> that would be so cool. Um, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, so I've done different conventions, both as both selling and a performance aspect. And then I also did MechaCon, and that was really cool for this reason. It is in Detroit, and um, it's happening this year. I'm not part of it, but I realized, like you said, or I said, <laughs> um, you got to focus on the thing that you're focused most on sometimes, I guess. Um, but that was fun because I actually, because I think either hotels and work for some reason, I stayed in Canada. So that was fun. Oh. Um, first, first, first visit to, you know, Canada, and yeah, yeah. I like the fact that when I interchanged my money, I got more back. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I felt I felt rich on yeah. a small scale, but I felt it. <laughs> I felt it inside. Um, but yeah, so MechaCon, Xbox, um, J1Con, Nertino, um, and I know I'm missing something. I said J1Con, but uh, but yeah, so I definitely. But I'm trying to remember who I did the the comic book with. Because I had that it's something. Oh, and then there's, oh, this is really, really cool. So there is a high school, um, Phillipsburg Con, that does its own con. And, like, this is the best part, guys, right? If you get invited, and it is an invitation thing, um, and I, you know, they've got linked to them through my friend Sean Aline, who's Pyroglyphic Studio. And also his work in the, um, he did the the, the cover um, art, the pencils and inks for the, um taking wing one where there's a little girl prying in front of this angel oh. so that's um but yeah i did uh phillipsburg and i think i've done one con with the comic book um and i can't remember which one that is i think i have i know i've done like ones with this this book so that's probably the ones i'm remembering the best but yeah but phillips con is all run by the kids hmm. um and it's just it's a lot of fun and also you ain't paying for a table Invite and they feed you. Oh wow! wow. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, so the, and they and not only that, they take your characters. And they actually draw stuff. Oh. So like I have stuff that like is Teddy Ninja by the kids and like <laughs> and they um they do swag too. They like did pens based on the different poster. Wow. So 
Yeah, no, I had, I, had, I had one. I love the idea that these young people came up with, you know, and I think like every think about it, like who who wouldn't want to like what wouldn't be a draw to like keep going to your school or, you know, to, to be able to do this. You know, I, I pray that they found some way to do this this year, you know, being hit right. by all this and having them to go to school. But those kids are uh, smart, you know, smarter, very creative. So they probably figured out a way But that was that kind of was so much fun. They're. <laughs> I know I'm going to talk about the food again. There, <laughs> they had donuts, they had vegetables. So whether you wanted to go healthy or not, it was there for you. And then they um, were connected to this uh, restaurant. Um, I think you paid for that, but the cake the kids made, they made, um, I'm trying to remember the name of that. And Paul, you, you probably will be able to remember this title. It's a very large rabbit that's gray and has like two ears. And it's my friend something. Uh, oh, are you trying to say my neighbor Totoro? Yes, yes. So they made a, the kids made a cake that was like the rabbit, and it was delicious. It was, <laughs> yeah. All right. yeah. So those are um, I I actually probably my my goal was to definitely do more cons with this now, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to work that because I moved from Philly to be out here last year, so I was trying to like kind of figure out the table set up and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So. Yep, those are those are the cons. <laughs> All, right. All right. Anything else you wanna? Uh, I don't really have any other questions. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna let you go. We do appreciate oh, okay. you uh, coming on the show, and we hopeful we'll have you back at some point in the future. Oh yes, yes definitely. I would love that. Um, in fact, I'll I'll, I'll throw something in there. Um. We are planning to drop the teaser trailer for the animation either on um, Halloween, which I'm woof, would love to yeah. be able to do that, or we're going to go for Thanksgiving, which is around the date when everybody is really online. So, huh. smart. Would love them. Yep. Okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be happy to. Uh, you know, we have a newsletter. We'll be happy to be mentioned in, in there if you want us to. Thank you. Sure. Oh yeah, no, no, definitely. Swish. Yes. <laughs> I would like that. I definitely would like that. Um, Okay, great. Well, thanks for being on the show. If you're if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, like if you like this. uh, Subscribe if you want to see more. uh, And ring that notification bell if you want to see exactly when these videos go up. So until next time, I'm David Hankins. I'm Paul Hankins. And you've been on the air with Power Squared. Thanks. Thank you.